Let's say your designer gives you this mock-up, and it's like really rough, but whatever. Um, how might we build this for iOS? Um, well, if we, if we take a look, let's say we have an image view at the top, we have UI buttons at the bottom, we have a couple stack views. Uh, in, in UI kit, right, everything is a UI view. Uh, at least it descends from it. So UI buttons are UI view, UI image views are UI view, UI text views are UI view, UI stack views are UI view, UI table view. Um, and this is good, right? Uh, because we can use these things together and build something. Um, and even, even if we have a custom view, like this middle thing here, we can still live because we can just subclass UI view ourselves from outside of UI kit. And that's kind of amazing when you think about it. Uh, so that's cool. Um, and, and you know, then we can use these views and build our, uh, build our product for iOS. But what if we wanted to do something else? What if we wanted to make a Mac app? Well, we'd have to do the same stuff all over again, but we'd have to do it with NS views, right? If we want to do the same thing on the web, we have to use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And uh, that's cool, but you know, if we know we have this layout, this is a contrived example, obviously, but if we know we're going to have an image view, a map view, two buttons, and it's going to be laid out in this way, why do we have to do the same thing over and over and over again? Wouldn't it be nice if we could take our, our layout, we could describe it once, and interpret that in different ways? You know? and, and actually, this is really a more specific instance of a general problem. And this general problem has a name. It's called the expression problem. The expression problem is, is uh, this really hard thing. Um, <laughs> basically, the expression problem says it's really hard for a library to simultaneously give you the ability to make a custom view, like our map view, and make it possible for you to change the interpretation of some layout. Okay? Uh, and we'll, we'll get back to this. But I spent a lot of time trying to come up with like a good solution to this in Swift, and until recently, I haven't really gotten anywhere. But uh, but then I found something. So today, we will finally solve the expression problem. All right. If we think about it, we know that subclassing is not going to work because uh, I already talked about it. Um, UI kit uses subclassing, and it didn't work. And it doesn't work because we're unable to change the meaning of our layout without reaching into UI kit and changing UI view. But what if we had an enum instead? We didn't use subclassing. Uh, it's not going to work, but it's not going to work in a different way, and something else is going to work, and then we can use these two things and figure out a better solution. So pretend we had enum kit. Enum kit's like UI kit. It lets us compose views together. Uh, but enum kit uses an enum, all right? An indirect enum, view. Inside view, we have every single view that we care about. A button, text field, text view, image view. We have stack view, table view. The, the views that contain other views, like a stack view, explicitly takes this uh, you know, children parameter where we have an array of views, okay? So to hopefully give this more uh, meaning, I guess, I, I want to show an example, right? So let's say we wanted to just describe those two buttons at the bottom of our, our mock-up. Well, that's, let's say, in a stack view, so we can make a stack view. Stack view has children. Inside the stack view, we stick a like button and a skip button, okay? But we haven't provided meaning to this, this view, right? Uh, and, and we can do that with a recursive traversal of our enum. So if we want to render something, we make a method that returns something, and inside we just switch on self. Now, if we have a text field, we create a text field somehow. If we have a stack view, we recursively call render on the children and use those subviews somehow. So if we want to recover the power of UIKit, we can make a render UI view that returns a UI view. And we just switch on self. If we have a text field, we make a UI text field. If we have a stack view, 
We make a UI stack view. We recursively call render on all the children. We take those views, we add them to the stack view, and we're done. So that's cool, right? But the really cool thing is nothing stops us from adding another method. We can render to an NS view. We just switch on self and handle all the cases. And the compiler will enforce that we do this, which is great. But we run into a problem. How do we add a new view type, like our map view in the first example? Well, the obvious way is to actually reach into enum kit. And remember, this is like our UI kit. We don't reach into UI kit and change anything. We'd have to reach into enum kit and add a new case. And that is kind of bad. So the expression problem, all right? If you're a chart person, maybe this will help, hopefully. <laughs> um, on the y-axis here, the ability to add new interpretations. This is changing the meaning of a view hierarchy, being able to render on iOS, Mac OS, web, et cetera. On the x-axis, the ability to add new items, okay? Like creating a map view. Expression problem all the way up into the right, all right? So enums won't work, subclassing doesn't work. What about non-exhaustive enums? For those that don't know, this is a new proposal, and it talks about how enums, by default now, uh, if this proposal passes, will have the ability to add new cases uh, from outside the modules where they're originally declared, okay? Um, so we can try that. We can say, I have an indirect enum that's non-exhaustive. I iterate through all the possible views, and, uh, and, and you know, this would be inside of our library. And then from outside the library, I can now add a new case, which is great. But when we go and try and implement the renderer, we get stuck, because we can handle the button and the text field and the stack view and the image view and the table view, et cetera, but we eventually have to handle the other stuff. And you know, the name of this change from default to hash unknown or whatever it'll be, but we're gonna have to do something here, and we're not gonna know what case we're in, so how are we gonna be able to create an NS view or a UI view? So this is not going to work. All right, protocols. What about protocols? It's going to be protocols, because it's always protocols. But it's not just protocols and we're done. It's using protocols in a specific way. And if we use protocols in this way, we can solve the expression problem, all right? So in order to convince you that I have a solution here, I'm going to show you how to provide the initial views. This is what would happen inside of the library, let's say how you can add new views from outside the library, how, sorry, how you can build view hierarchies using these primitives, how you can provide multiple interpretations for those view hierarchies, okay? So, we know view is a protocol, because I said so. Um, but, <laughs> but what does it mean, right? What, what does it mean to create a button? If, if view is a protocol, how can we have a more specific view? Doesn't really make sense. Well, if you think about it, we could make a static method on the protocol. Now, the, the parameters of the method are similar to the associated values in the enum case, right? So we have the text, we have whatever we do when we tap, we have whatever else we need to render the view. And we're gonna return self, okay? And self, for those that don't know, is the special type in protocols that refers to the instance type. So whenever you implement this, uh, be it with a class, a struct, or an enum, the, the concrete type gets replaced with self, okay? And I'll, I'll show this in a minute. So, and then recursive views, like the stack view, have the uh, recursive part using self instead of view explicitly, okay? If we wanna take a look at like, what really happens when we're gonna implement this, and we're gonna conform to it. I'll just show you. So real, right, is our concrete thing. Uh, the self gets replaced with the real type everywhere, okay? So in button, it's the return type. In the stack view, it's in the recursive case and the return type. Okay, so how can we add new cases? Well, we have a protocol, and protocols can be inherited in Swift. So from outside the library, we can make a new protocol with map view. With map view conforms to view, so in other words, it inherits the constraints of view, and it also provides this extra constraint, you must implement this map method, okay? 
Now, if we want to build a hierarchy, if we want to build this example, let's first look at the two buttons. This time, we're going to use a function instead of a, a value. Okay? And we're going to use a function because we need to return a generic type, v. So we know v must be a view. So we're going to say v colon view. When we do that, Swift lets us use static methods on v. How cool is that? So we can just make a stack view. And inside there, we can make the two buttons. And Swift is smart enough to infer that when you say dot button in this context, you mean invoke the static method on the v generic type. Okay? Then the rest of the view, v is no longer just a view, not a mere view. It is a with map view view. Um, because with map view is also a view, we can still make a stack view, but we can also make a map along with the image we need and the two buttons. And the two buttons is the function that we defined earlier. We can just stick functions in here, which is great. So this describes the view, but again, it doesn't give meaning to it. We have to provide these concrete instances that can render. And, and to do so, we conform to the protocol. We say UI view is a view. Now, when we do this, the compiler says, hey, you better implement all the methods. You better implement the method to make a text view. Um, and now, because self gets swapped with the concrete type, we return a UI view. We know how to do that. We make a UI text view. We do the same thing for image view, the same thing for stack view, et cetera. And the compiler will enforce that we handle every single method. So it's still safe. And because you can have multiple concrete types conform to the same protocol, we can make a render to HTML. We just say how to render, let's say, text to HTML, which is with a P tag. And we can do the same thing with an image view and a text view. All right, the text view is already there, but you get the point, right? So that's pretty cool. Then when we actually want to choose an interpretation, um, I find it nice to actually use an identity function, which might be a little strange. But uh, this lets us give a different name to the function than the type. That kind of makes sense. So I can call the render UI kit function that forces the generic view to be a UI view. The implementation is just returning V. We can render to web, take HTML, return HTML. We can render to PDF, take PDF, return PDF. As long as PDF conforms to view, we can render our view hierarchy to a PDF. We can serialize. We can take NS data, return NS data, as long as NS data conforms to view. Then inside your view controller, finally, we can call our function that's generic, pass it into one of these identity functions that'll give it a concrete type, and then we can use it. So we can say self.view equals our, our view. But we can, in the same class, reuse that generic function that we defined earlier, but use it with a different identity function and do something else. So it's pretty cool. Now, if you want to search for this to learn more, you're not going to find it by Googling protocols with self and expression problem or something. Um, but you will find it if you search final tagless style. So specifically, as I've defined it, a protocol is a final tagless DSL, and a protocol instance, protocol conformance, is a final tagless interpreter. Okay? But I don't want to leave you on this, because I told you that the expression problem is general. I just think the view hierarchy is an interesting example. But I want to show you some more expression problem instances. Okay? Um, I'm going to go through these pretty fast, because I want to cover a lot. So bear with me. All right. Diagrams. Let's say I have a bunch of shapes, and I want to lay them out on a canvas. They might be on top of each other. Well, the items, these are the equivalent to our views. Well, we have the specific shapes, squares, circles, etc. The layering of shapes is an item, to layer one shape on top of each other. We can take that description and then render it with core graphics. We can take that and render it with core animation. We can take that and render it to an SVG and then serialize it or send it over the network or put it in a web view. And we can do that with the same description of the diagram. We can think about side effects. The items, when we think about side effects, are the actual effects, making a post request, sending an analytics packet. Now, there's an obvious interpretation that is actually performing the effect for its effect. But we could log the effect and not perform it. We could emit a data structure that then we can write tests against. Okay? We can think about arithmetic, or really any sort of mini language. So I'm talking about like 1 plus 2 minus 3. The items, well, the numbers. But addition of numbers is an item, multiplication, subtraction, division, Fibonacci, square root, anything you can think of. 
And we can take that and we can evaluate it to a number, which is cool, but we can also evaluate it to a string and then log it. Like, we can actually view the 1 plus 2 plus 3. We can render to a UI view, and then we can show a pretty picture, like colored parentheses or a nice tree. So to summarize, the expression problem, it's about extensibility in two dimensions. You need to be able to add new items, and you need to be able to change the meaning of each item. In our case, we needed to be able to add the map view and change the meaning of our view hierarchy. Now, the final tagless approach in Swift solves this problem, and it's the only thing that I've found that, is, that properly solves it. And the way it works is the methods within protocols that return self are the items, and protocol instances are the interpretations. So if you want to learn more, I'm going to tweet the slides. So these are links. The top one is 45-page PDF about final tagless, not in Swift, but it's still really good. The next two are examples. Um, I've been working on with Chris Idoff on these. And uh, you should look for upcoming Swift Talk episodes, because we're going to be talking about this stuff. That's it. <laughs>